You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 169. And today, let's find lifestyle inside your busy business and learn how to avoid sabotaging your life goals by aligning your values. So let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Hey, are you a thought leader, creative entrepreneur, or change maker and want to magnify your impact? boost influence while creating a financial abundance? Stay tuned for today's inspiring episode with your host, Melanie Benson. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, profit amplifier, Melanie Benson. And today I've got a special guest joining me to talk about lifestyle business mastery and one of my absolute favorite topics, values. Now, if you're not really sure what values are, What they are is a compass. It's a set of ideals that you prioritize and manage your life around. And we have uh, values for our life. We have values for our business. Most of the time those should overlap. But a lot of times your business values start to override your life values. And you're not sure why you don't have time for anything important to you, right? Well, my guest today is here to talk about how to reorient your business goals, your business values, so they're serving your life priorities. And it's such an important topic. I know I personally had such a huge wake-up call about this a couple years into running my business where I realized I had literally recreated a job for myself. And that was not going to do. Now, before I introduce my guest to you, I'm super excited to share with you one of our brand new offerings here. And this is for you if you're out there wanting to get your message shared on podcasts. I know a lot of people who listen in, part of our Amplify community, you are building a business around your expertise and you're looking for better ways to get your message out in front of your ideal clients. Podcast guesting is one of my favorite strategies for that. And I'm going to be doing a live series in our Amplify Your Success community in the very near future to show you how you can start tapping into this really extraordinary platform to get in front of your ideal clients. But first, before you join me for that in AmplifyYourSuccessCommunity.com, Make sure that you have a copy of my 17 mistakes you're making in your interviews that's costing you leads and clients. I want you to study that list and I want you to get yourself a quick assessment. Am I making these mistakes in my interviews? Look, we're all like looking for ways to enhance our best efforts, right? Like we want to get our best foot forward at all times. And so we're all going to make these mistakes at some point. But if you can minimize them, then you can maximize your leads, you can maximize that time and energy getting on podcasts, and you can actually turn it into your best client magnet without having to travel all over the country or the world to get on stages. So you can get that special report at getmagneticmessaging.com forward slash report. Now, let me introduce you to my special guest. If you've ever wondered how to fit all the life priorities into your business, then pay special attention. My guest today is going to help us master our lifestyle business. Let me introduce you to Jen Duplessis. She's an international speaker, a top selling author, a coach, a podcast host. She's the founder of Kinetic Spark Consulting, Black Box Investments, and Valor Home Solutions. She's the author of Launch, How to Take Your Business to New Heights, and is also the host of the first mortgage-specific and top-rated podcast, Mortgage Lending Mastery. She's got over 35 years in residential mortgage lending and was ranked in the top 1% of loan originators in the U.S. for many years, as well as being in the top 200 for four years. She's a self-proclaimed serial entrepreneur, has shared stages with Tony Robbins, Les Brown, Darren Hardy, Magic Johnson, and many more, but specializes in creating lifestyle businesses to multiply results in record time, all while continuing a very prosperous 
personal lifestyle. And just to add a little bit more buzz quality to our amazing guest today, she's appeared on Good Morning America. She's been on Sirius XM Radio, Voice America Radio, and now she's joining us right here in Amplify Your Success Podcast. Jen, it was such a uh, exciting opportunity to meet you at New Media Summit and then realize with so many people in common, <laughs> so yeah. many friends in common. Yeah, it's exciting. It is exciting. And I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity for me to come on your show and share my message. Yeah, you're welcome. And I have to say, you know, we were talking in the green room a little before we jumped in. And, and one of the things that I love right now is this uh, the movement of exposing how we shatter glass ceilings, right? And I love that that you're gonna you said you're gonna start a podcast on that in, in the new year. So well done, exciting. Yeah. But I think what we're talking about today for, for a lot of reasons is a version of a glass ceiling. How many people feel trapped in a career or a business or in a in a lifestyle, even like a business that's gotten them into a certain lifestyle, and then they feel like that becomes their own glass ceiling. Yeah, it definitely does. And, um, and, and not even the ceiling, I say it's a, a box. Right? Mm, yeah, it's a glass box. Between, <laughs> yeah, it's just going rather than going up. It's, it's like glass all around them, you know, and, uh, you know, I think that just the exterior factors are contributing to you know, people creating lives that they think they need to have based on what everybody else has or wants or thinks they should have, you know, and I think social media is a big play in that. And um, we try to keep up with the Joneses, but the fact of the matter the Joneses are in their same glass box too, you know? Mm, that's so true. I've seen that, you know, being 20 years into the coaching and information marketing world as I am, I've seen so many uh, entrepreneurs and and authors and speakers and people who have this great big message end up in these glass boxes. So I'm excited to explore this with you today and also really look at what it means of this concept of lifestyle business mastery. So maybe you can break that down for us and unpack it a little bit so we better understand it. Sure. I'm happy to. Um, yeah, the, you know, the easiest way to explain this is that we tend in business to focus on the numbers. We're looking at our life through dollar signs, right? And we create businesses based on what we want to achieve for success. And we try to squeeze and fit in the rest of our life around that. So my proposal is that we increase the awareness of what really fulfills us in life. You know, what are the things that, that, what is the kind of lifestyle that we want? And I'm not talking specifically about monetary things like the big car and the big house and all that. I'm talking about the things that fulfill us, you know, so that we're not watching life pass us by or not even participating in life. So if we can increase the awareness of what truly makes us happy and then build a successful business around it, that's what's going to give me the most joy, you know, in what I'm doing because I've been able to do that and so much happier and I'm still making good money, right? It's not, it's not that we have to sacrifice time for money. It's that we can reset ourselves by creating, you know, becoming a master of this lifestyle business. Mm. So I think a lot of people hear lifestyle business, but it means different things to different people. So what I'm hearing you say is like really orienting your business so it supports your life. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like going on vacation every day. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, you got to you know, say more about that because yeah. that, that really starts to get intriguing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and I actually had someone say to me, well, I don't want to go on vacation every day, which is pretty funny. But um, yeah, I mean, to think about it when you go on vacation, we get very intentional, very focused at business, right? And I mean, to the extent that some people say, you know, now I can't go out, uh, I can't go on vacation because I'm going to worry about all the business that's coming in at the last minute. And um, so my my thought here is, if I can go into work and be extremely intentional, which is part of what I do with my coaching, right, is the tactical piece of working smarter, not harder. And if we can go in and be intentional and laser focused, because we know that we're going on vacation later on, the, and I'm doing air quotes, later on in the afternoon. And what I mean by that is that I'm getting out of the office and I'm, getting, I'm going to do the things that I love to do in life, right? The things that fulfill me. 
And so, for example, I'm a competitive ballroom Latin and swing dancer, and I dance two to three hours a day, right? So I have to get in, do my work so I can go on my vacation. So whatever that is for you, whether it's family, date night with someone, right, or working out or whatever, I hear too often people say, you know, I just don't have time to work out. I don't have time to go to the opera if that's what you like to do. I don't have time to do these things. And the fact of the matter is you have all the time in the world. I have the same time that you do. It's just how I, um, how I uh, coordinate that, right? And um, so I'm just all in and then all in to the next thing. I don't believe in balance. If you think about a scale, it's 50-50. Think about it as standing on two boats at the same time, right? You're never going to stop moving. You're never going to stop working. It's very stressful because you're balancing constantly. There's never any downtime. And so I'm suggesting go be on one boat and enjoy it and then go on another boat later and enjoy it. Um, but be intentional about when you're on uh, in your work so that you can be intentional when you're with your family, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a very powerful message, especially if people tend to find themselves so immersed in their work that mm -hmm. they're not making time for other things. Like I remember vividly a conversation with a, a client one time, she was a new client and she'd met me uh, when I was speaking at an event and she immediately, you know, rushed over and bought my program. <laughs> but then when we're having our first coaching conversation, what I uncovered with her was that she was so worried that she would, like, if she was going to grow her business, that she would get so immersed in it and she would lose time for like the people that she loved. And that was keeping her from wanting to grow. And I'm wondering if you see this in your work and in, in your programs, if that people literally hold themselves back from growth, from expansion, because they're so worried that they won't be able to, to balance those, or not, well, balance is not the right word for you, but you know, like uh, have the discipline to move from one boat to the other and they'll just stay in the work boat. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you say that, you know, I've ran across a couple of people who have said that they don't want to grow for the sake of growth, you know, and especially, you know, as coaches like you and I, you know, I think a lot of people think that, you know, hey, you want to grow your business. That means grow your bank account. Right. And um, some people say, you know, I don't want to grow my bank account. I just want to take care of the people I, I am serving because I like my lifestyle. Right. But I would say that the majority of people are, are not that, uh, the majority of people, and I can, I can actually count, I've got, you know, 70 some clients. I can probably count two or three of them that have said that the rest of them are chasing, right? They're just chasing and everything is based, their worth is based on how much money they're making. Right. And I don't, I'm not opposed to that. Believe me, I'm, I made tons and tons of money doing what I was doing. I'm just saying that we have to get our priorities straight. We've got to get our priorities in line. And um, so, you know, the story that I told at New Media Summit, you know, was about me going to, quote, dinner with my family and standing outside of it, you know, and walking back and forth and pacing and being on the phone with that client that absolutely needed me, right? And looking into the window of the restaurant and seeing my family enjoying the, you know, time together, laughing and all the, all that and creating these memories that were without me. I wasn't in them. And even if I was in there nine times out of 10, I'm on my phone. So I'm never really present. And that for me was the breakthrough that said, you know, this is enough of this, you know, it's not that important, but what I was able to do is figure out a way that I could make the same amount of money working less and spending more time with my family but I had to get my priorities in, straight, um, in line. So how do we go about figuring out what our priorities are? Well, for me, it was um, and is that my, the whole premise of my practice is that a life of values adds value everywhere in your life. And my belief is that we're killing ourselves, literally. <laughs> there's so much, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of health issues because of this. And, you know, um, there's just a lot of problems. And I think that my belief is that we're killing ourselves to make an almighty buck and there's a better way to do it. And so 
for me, it's alignment of values. You know, if you, if you truly say, if you said to me, my family is the most important thing to me, then I would say to you, then why are you working till 11 o'clock at night? That's a misalignment of values. And there's not boundaries set around that to, to tell that client, no, I can't meet with you tonight because I have a previous obligation with my, with my family, right? My mom used to have this great quote and I heard it all my life, but it didn't resonate until that night of the story that I just told you. And it, it is um, that we flatter, flatter those we scarcely know. We please the fleeting guests but we deal many a thoughtless blow to those we love the best. Mm, that's powerful. It is, isn't it? And so, so we put all these, all these clients and all these business pieces ahead of our family. And, um, and, and that's just one example, ahead of anything that we love to do because we're so angst about getting business and growing business and all, and all of those things. And so, um, so what I focus on with my, with my coaching is not only that mindset shift there that says the priority is family, not business, right? That when we get into business, um, we are again, very, very intentional and very clear about what our message is, how, how we're going to attract business rather than have to chase it because I don't have time to chase business because I'm going on vacation tonight. So priorities really are personal right? Yes. And, mm -hmm. and everybody's got their own priorities, but then you talked about values. A question that comes up a lot um, for my clients is what's really the difference between a priority and a value, or is there one in your opinion? Oh, I definitely think there is. There is. Yeah. Um, I think one is an action item and one is a principle, you know, so with values, you know, I can make better decisions in my life and in my business because of my values. And so when someone says, says to me, for example, um, you know, could you, could you uh, meet me tonight at eight o'clock or can I call you tonight at eight o'clock? Right. I'm going to immediately be go back to my values and say, well, wait a minute. One of my values is family. Let me see if this conflicts with family. And if there's something that we're supposed to be doing in our family, and again, back to my mom's quote, right? We flatter those we scarcely know. Uh, I go back to my family and I say, you know what? I can't meet you tonight because I have another appointment, right? And we don't have to come up with all these excuses. Just, I, I'm sorry, I can't meet with you tonight. And so I'm setting a priority and a precedence. And you're right with discipline, right? That's one of the words I use too, is the discipline to set boundaries around what is truly important for you. And as entrepreneurs and just as people that are moving so quickly these days, we, it's that FOMO, right? The fear of missing out of everything, whether it's social or, you know, a bunch of girls going to dinner or it's a dinner, you know, a dinner meeting. We're so afraid of missing out on the external things that we are, we just completely losing sight of the fact that we are missing out on everything internal to us. Mm. I'm th so glad that you're bringing that part up about FOMO because I think that's what plays into overwhelm for people. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so there's this constant, like, yeah. where am I supposed to be? Where do I need to be? And sometimes those priorities are in conflict with each other. And what advice would you have for someone who's really ready to make this step and they're, it's time, they know they need to you know, embody more life, right? Like, like, yeah. okay, I'm done having my business be, or my career be the only thing that I'm, I'm uh, giving time and attention to, but they feel conflicted about all these places they want to have time for. Yeah. Well, I, you know, again, I, it, there's, there's twofold. One is the mindset. And of course the other is the tactical piece of it is really, you know, understanding, especially if you're a business owner, is understanding um, your business. You know, I always say slow down so you can speed up instead of speeding up to slow down. Um, it's taking a step back and, you know, this while we're recording, this is a good time of the year, you know, to be able to assess that and say, you know, what what is truly important in my business and the activities that I'm doing, am I doing them for the sake of activities, for the FOMO, right? And I mentioned this too, it's like eating soup with a fork. You come home and you're exhausted because all you've done is eaten soup with a fork all day. 
And I'm suggesting that you realize what it's like to eat soup with a spoon and really have great results and, and feel full, right? So it would start with the mindset shift of what makes you uh, fulfilled, right? What truly makes you happy, those things that you smile when you're doing it, right? Um, whether it's sitting out on the porch and watching birds in the morning with a cup of coffee or whether it's going to dinner with um, couple friends, right? How many times have we said, when we go to dinner, we should do this again. This was fun. We should do this again. And we don't do it. And so we don't look and chase those things that make us happy. Um, and so that's where it starts there is just sitting down and taking the time to say, what makes me happy? And what do I want more of? Like, I want more of that. That makes me so happy that I want more of it. So how am I going to get more of it? And the way you get more of it is then directing your business activities to ensure that you get faster, more efficient results, allowing you the time to enjoy the things that make you happy. You know, it's interesting how many people in our industry these days are sensitive to the, um, you know, like, are we going to talk about avoiding pain or are we going to talk about bringing more pleasure into our life? And what I love about this conversation is this is a pleasure focused experience, right? It's like yeah. we're moving towards people towards how do you create more joy, more fulfillment, more pleasure in your life? Not necessarily like this is what it's costing you. And, and when we hear this, and I hope as you're listening in today, you really take in that sometimes this moment is driven by I've had enough of not having time. But what's possible when you allow yourself to be pulled towards more joy and pleasure is everything orients itself in a nanosecond and, and success becomes a easier journey. Oh, and I really think that's what you're talking about, Jen, is how do we create a foundation so that success is easier because everything has its spot. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what priority management is. You know, it's AKA time management, right? It's, it's um, getting in, getting focused, getting done and going and living your life. And then when you're living your life, it's getting in, getting focused, enjoying it, having the memories, creating, you know, a legacy or dynasty, however you want to say that, you know, um, and experiences for yourself so that you can get then back to your business and be focused there and be razor sharp, right? And iron sharpens iron. And, and, and it's all just this, this satisfaction of um, not just constantly. I always say, I see people being like cats on a marble floor in oil. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just total chaos, right? So I really like to focus on efficiency, you know, efficiencies, like how can I get anything that I'm doing done faster so that I can get to what I love? This is just a means to an end. My job, my business is a means to an end. And I promise that, it, you know, all these adages that we have in life, you know, like less is more, is true. You don't have to work 70 hours to get more business. More isn't more. If you're working smarter, you can work less hours and get more. For the last eight years before I retired from mortgage lending, I only worked four days a week and I made over a million dollars every year. And it's that's, because I got in, I knew what I needed to do. I had developed efficiencies in my business to attract business to me rather than have me go out there, chase it for 70 hours a week. I built systems that allowed for the business to come to me and be, we're in a, in a case where I'm in demand instead of being on demand. This is a really pivotal moment for many listening in today, because I was hoping you would unpack, like, what does this really mean, right? So like, how do we, how do we pull this off is what are the systems? What are the ways in which you shift you're not chasing business, business is chasing you. And yeah. this is the moment that everything changes. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, because I, I mean, that's exactly what it is. And I think that we can allow time to ooze as far as we want when we're not clear on what we want in our business, right? But the driving force for me, and I, and I totally agree with what I just said, but the driving force for me is that 
everything in business is a means to me getting to my happiness. And so the faster I can get through the business, the faster I can get to happiness. And that has to be a strong enough pull that you have to, to a certain extent, be stingy with your time, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of giving everybody everything and, you know, and, and doing things in an inefficient way. But that pull has to be there. So it's really about going back to the beginning and saying, you know, what if you've ever watched a movie notebook, you know, and he says, what do you want? What do you want? And that's, that's really it is what do you want? Because I can help you get your business. I can help you get what you want financially. But what do you want personally? Because I don't know anybody who dies and, you know, all the stories, all the movies, who's in their deathbed and saying, how much money's in my bank account quick before I die? They're saying, I'm sorry I didn't this, or I was happy I could spend time with you, right? That's, that's where this is. That pull has to be so strong that you become the most efficient business owner, salesperson, whatever you, whatever you do, so you can get in and get out and enjoy your life. Boom, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you have a resource available to help people take this concept and break it down and, and integrate it more into um, their everyday being. Tell us a little bit about it and how people can find it. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Yeah, so, um, you know, I've provided you with the link, so you'll be able to have the link there um, for someone to go and grab this. But it's seven strategies to transform your business mindset. And, you know, it's just seven, um, it's not even questions, it's just seven uh, um, exercises that you could go to that are saying, you know, do I have my head on straight before I build my business? Um, and of course, a lot of us already have our businesses built, but this will this will have you start questioning the decisions that you're making on a daily basis. You know, like, um, am I, am I, uh, you know, uncomfortable is, you know, be, un or to how to be uncomfortable to stop the stall in your business, right? Is getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and asking yourself, you know, what am I doing in my life right now to make myself truly happy? And some of that is that you have to get out of your comfort zone in order to get one or two more um, sales per week, right? Or whatever it may be, so that you can really enjoy, um, you know, enjoy your life. But other questions, you know, are like, um, obviously, the personal uh, core, you know, the core values checkup and things, but who are the people that are in your circle? Are you associating yourself with the right people? Are they, are they pushing you to work more? Are they people that you want to spend more time with? Um, or is it that you're working with people that, uh, you know, you actually don't even like, right? And you think that I have to work with them because that's the only way I'm going to do business. And, and then are they the right people for where you're at right now in your business? You know, if you think of a, a ladder and the rungs of a ladder equaling, uh, you know, different, different levels of uh, revenue, you, unless you are a monkey in a barrel, you're not going to be able to get to the top by holding on to the bottom. And some of that's habits. Some of that is the habits that you have. Some of it, some of it is your skill set uh, and other parts of the people that you're associated with. The, the, you know, assistant that you've had for five years because she's just so nice might not be ready to go up to that next level and maybe preventing you from going to that next level. So it's just a lot of mindset um, thoughts just to get you thinking about, yeah, Jen, you're right. I'm really not living my life. I'm just participating in my life. And hopefully from there, you'll say, you know what? I'm ready to write a mortgage, or not a mortgage. I don't know why that came up. I'm ready to write a plan that now align so much better with what I truly, truly want. So as you're listening in, that's that link will be on the show page. But if you are driving in the car or in a place where you're listening but can't write, uh, just know you can go back and get it. But you can also go to jenduplessis.com forward slash seven strategies. And that's the number seven strategies. And we will link it up on the show notes for you. So you can grab that. It sounds like a very um, 
uh, I don't want to say inspirational, but it's it sounds like it's a way to kind of challenge some assumptions that maybe you've set about how you're going to do business in life and create some new possibilities by going through some of the the prompts in this uh, resource you have. So thank you. So as we're wrapping up here, Jen, I always like to ask my guests, what's the boldest thing you've ever had to do to get where you are today? Um, that's a great question. Uh, gosh, there were quite a few things. Um, you know, I would say the, the boldest thing that I had to do was let go of my ego. <laughs> right. Oh, you got to unpack that one a little bit. Will, That's really I good. <laughs> yeah. well, I had to let go of my ego to, you know, go to a higher place. And, uh, you know, so a very short story is, you know, I was doing really well in my practice, um, but I could see, and it's a glass ceiling, you know, thing here. Um, you know, I could see that I could go to the next level. I mean, every single month I had the volume to go to the next level, but I wasn't going there. And I was working till 1130 at night, calling my home, uh, hotel home. I'd get home at 1130 at night, eat, which is not good. Go to bed, not sleep because I was overwhelmed and stressed, worried about business again, getting up early and doing the whole thing all over again. And I refused to hire people. I, because I was and I didn't realize it was ego at the time, but I refused to hire people because I said, well, I built it. They want me. It's all about me. And I was killing myself to serve people. And I realized that I have to let go of my ego and realize that I had built a system that would create a client experience that it wasn't that they needed me. They wanted my system, right? Every time that a client came to me because of how they felt working with me, they, that's what they wanted. It wasn't Jennifer. It was the, the system you know, that they had. And I hired my first assistant and it was tough to let other people in. I'm very coveted kind of, you know, put at that time, you know, put the, put the armor on me and you couldn't poke holes through it. Right. For, for various reasons in my childhood. But, um, I finally let someone in and by letting someone in the next time, it wasn't that I went from level A to B, I went from A to Z immediately. And for me, that was the boldest thing, letting someone in like that and letting go of my ego and realizing I can't do it alone. I need, I need help getting to where I want to go. And I think we all need that in everything that we're doing. You know, we, we just can't do all this stuff alone and not just business, but life generally. I think um, every high achieving powerhouse I've ever talked to this is one of those areas that was a struggle for them is letting go <laughs> or letting go elegantly instead of like yeah. a big, like, take it all from me. And then you run the other direction. Right. right. Um, there's a real balance in how we let go. And I'm really glad you shared that story. Cause I think a lot of people will, will feel um, connected to you knowing that, that they also have to struggle letting go to grow. So that's a great one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, and a part of that is when you let go like that, it frees up more time so you can go on vacation every day. There you go. <laughs> and you're, when you're doing the things you love and right. you're doing less of the things that you don't really love, it does feel more like vacation, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It definitely does. Jen, thanks so much. Thanks for being one of the catalysts for um, integrating our real priorities in the world, which help us be happier human beings. I'm so grateful that there are other people out there bringing this um, and, and like holding people accountable to the life they really, really, truly uh, want and deserve. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great pleasure. And I love what you're doing for everyone as well. And you know, helping everyone amplify their success because whatever that is for them, right? Whatever it is, just make it, make it bigger, badder, and better. Love it. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. This is Melanie Benson, your host. Thanks so much for listening in today. If you want to catch up on any of the show notes and circle back on any of the resources we shared in today's show, head on over to the show page at Amplify Your Success Podcast. Dot com. And remember, you amplify your results faster when you're in a community of other people who are moving and shaking. Join us at AmplifyYourSuccessCommunity.com. One last thing, 
When you've gained insight from today's episode, help us share that and inspire other people by heading over to iTunes, subscribing, and give it a review. iTunes absolutely loves seeing these reviews pop up, and it actually helps boost my show's visibility. So I would be super grateful for your reviews. And as always, I love seeing your shares of these episodes on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Come find me over there. Tag me in your shares. I'll give you some social media love right back. So see you next week for another inspiring episode of Amplify Your Success Podcast.